it may be a necessary thing. Maybe we weren't gonna be able to last much longer with these strange reward scenarios. I mean, yeah. maybe we are about to break it all anyways. We are, for, for, a, for a fact. And so this intelligence potentially could get us back to be what it means to be human. I agree. If we can make it to the fourth inevitable of the utopia. I think some of us would. Right, some of us will. Now Hugo says there'll be a giga death of a yeah. billion people dying as we fight, some that are pro-machine, some that are pro-human. And the reason that episode scared you is because you think there's some truth to that. Uh, inevitable. Inevitable. I mean, political the, parties and the whole thing. Yeah, d d define war, okay? But yeah, okay. Th there, de there definitely is going to be a conflict, okay? T t just, just think about this in a in a simple way, huh? Self-driving cars replacing every Uber driver and taxi driver. That's a war. Right. That's a riot in the street. That's a lot of people suffering. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I and I hosted an incredible uh, uh, venture capitalist from California on on my podcast. And I and you know I said, and why are we creating this? And she said, because it's more efficient. It's faster. You know, we're 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 going. It's error free. It grows the economy. Uh, you know, and and all wonderful, wonderful systemic mindsets. And I said, but do we need it? What's wrong with the drivers? Why, why, why do we want to make it two seconds faster? Why? And and I, you know, I I, I keep saying this: the fact that we can make it does not justify that we should. Right? Did she have an answer for you? Did she, she understand the question? She, 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 stop. she, she stopped. Yeah. She stopped and said, yeah. I, "I don't know because we have a shortage of drivers in California." And I and again, that's that's very interesting perspective because we have an abundance of jobless people elsewhere in the world that are actually refugees looking for for shelter and we just created that you know artificial boundary that says if you're born in that country with that color passport you're not allowed in this place right. when in reality there are other ways I, one of my favorite conversations ever i hosted again on my podcast uh, 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 um, um, uh, an environmentalist and uh, environmental activist Okay, an incredible young woman uh, who started to be an activist at a very young age. She was 23 when I hosted her. And I, and I asked her, I said, is there a technology that's in the making that would solve climate change? And she very cheerfully said, yeah, the technology has been invented a long time ago. It's called a tree. And that stopped me in like, yes, yes, yes. If, if it was my California hat, the, the chief executive, you know, chief business officer of Google X, I would have been looking at incredibly complex nanophysics based technologies. And the technology is, is there. You know, the, everything that we need as humanity is there. Right. But we're stuck in this paradigm of it has to be quicker, better, faster, larger, whatever. Yeah. And we need more, 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 more that more. get us maybe less, less, less human. Yeah. So uh, Mark Andreessen talked about bootleggers and Baptists, I think, in that paper. And he overall concluded that everything was going to be OK. He said in any boom, there's Baptists and bootleggers. And sometimes the Baptists are, in fact, bootleggers. And I think he was taking a swipe at Altman by saying those that are asking for regulation sometimes are the actual bootleggers. What did you make of his paper? I have to be humble enough to say he knows so much okay and that it is a singularity the point i need to make clear is this is my perception of a moment in the future that none of us has experienced before i could be right he could be right i could be right and he could be wrong he could be right and i'm wrong or we could both be wrong right the reality of the matter is there is a point of singularity approaching to be on, on either extremes is diluting the value of the conversation. So to talk about existential risks and that AI will take over humanity and there will be, you know, a, a, a Skynet or Terminator uh, you know, killing machines walking the streets, that's losing the focus from the actual immediate threat, which is the redesign of the fabric of society. Okay, to dismiss the problem altogether 
is a bit of complacence where a little bit of engagement and conversation and a little bit of uh, of regulation and you know and restriction and testing and testing is really interesting before before you are allowed to to swallow a pill that could cure your headache it goes to fda testing and approval hmm? there needs to be a little bit of testing so that when something's out on the on the open internet it doesn't hurt our teenage children okay Anywhere on those two extremes, I think is wrong. I think the balanced path in the middle that says there is likely going to be challenges. Some of them are very high likelihood, like the design, redesign of the fabric of society. Some of them are less likely, like you know, but are more threat, you know, more threatening, like an existential threat of AI. Okay, it's possible, it's probable, but lower probability. Those conversations need to be had. Okay? They need to be had in a way that says, yeah, let's all cross our fingers and hope that everything will be wonderful and that we will end up in a utopia where that incredibly intelligent, one billion times smarter beast that we're creating is going to still kneel in front of us and say, yes, master, I am Jeeves, I'm your butler, I will do what you want. Okay, but if we're if if, if you know if if there is a tiny possibility that you, that it will say. You annoy me, I don't want you on my path. We might as well work on this right now. And that balance in the middle is what I've been advocating for. That balance in terms of making users aware, making humans aware. I, I was honored yesterday walking the streets of London in front of a hotel where a, a doorman uh, stopped me and said, I saw your, uh, your thing about AI. Uh, you know, it was very eye-opening. I didn't know those things existed. This man's life hmm, is going to be affected by artificial intelligence. Okay, we need to make him aware. We need to make him aware. If a video, I, 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 I ask people to go and on social media and search for the hashtag AI model. Hashtag AI model. You will be blown away from how realistic sexy and attractive ai is able to generate likeness of humanity i mean and, yeah the mid-journey pictures are getting to be ridiculous uh, ridiculous yeah. and, and and i think the idea is we need to start finding a government regulation a rule between all of us that's unwritten that says hey by the way this is not a human this is ai generated that says this video is fake you know, it's it's deep fake. It's not. It's not. You know, we we deserve that. We deserve to to uh, to be told which of the comments we're gonna get on this video is a bot and which isn't. We deserve to be uh, you know to be told uh, of the progress that's happening in AI in terms of reskilling ourselves. And there is so much that needs to be put out there to be discussed so that we're not hit with a pandemic, okay, right. and then suddenly told to stay home. And then suddenly, you know, the, the whole chaos starts. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link, and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto boot camp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator, by far, 
was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.